Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from Home Maker. Before I start with our today's video, I would like to thank all our viewers who have liked and subscribed to our channel. And if you haven't done it so far, please don't forget to subscribe for our new releases every week. So let's get started with our today's video. So friends, in this video, we will be talking about the propagation of Tenethi Setosa Compact Star. I have already uh, made a video on care and propagation of this plant but in that video I did not went into the detail of how to propagate this plant and um, I'll be doing that in this video. I'll be showing you how you can propagate this beautiful evergreen perennial herbaceous shrub um, with the beautiful um, long leaves which are dark green and silvery on the top and has got beautiful purple um, undersides so friends this plant makes a, an amazing house plant and because of um, its beautiful striking um, green foliage uh, it looks very stunning very beautiful uh, especially as indoor plants you can um, grow these plants outdoor as well as under shade under shade plants like under tall trees or as ground covers because these plants give out um, offshoots and when they give out offshoots they kind of spread everywhere very easily and as you can see here i have got this whole corner covered with big Tenethi Setosa uh, compact star and um, it has completely covered this whole and, and as you can see the height of this plant it uh, the leaves have already gone approximately one meter in length and <clears throat> they look really really beautiful so um, let's get started with the propagation of this plant so friends as you can see there are two clumps of um, in front of you, you can see two clumps of um, Tenethi uh, compact star. One is that one over there and the another one is this one. So what happens is that one fully developed clump will give out an offshoot from under the soil and after traveling a little bit of the distance, it will give out another shoot which is this one. So what we are going to do is today is we are going to divide that one and I'm going to clearly show you how you can do that. Uh, just let me put a little bit of the focus on the soil so here friends if you separate this over here I'm not sure if you can see that white root over there if you can see that white root over here And same way over here you can see this shoot of shoot that is attached to the mother plant there and there are its roots over here if you can see this one is the root of this shoot and this plant is attached to the mother plant over there and this is the offshoot coming out so now what we are going to do is we are going to separate this one from here because as you can see it has got its own roots and this one is one more big root which will travel a little bit more far and then give out another offshoot so th th that is how these roots from under the soil travel and they become um, like a ground cover so now we are going to separate it from here it has got an, its own roots and it uh, once we separate it we'll um, put it in the pot and it will survive because it has got its own roots over there so let me show you how you can do that so you can take a clean pair of pruners and you can cut this part from there So I have made a simple snip over there and then you can pull it out. Don't be very hard on it. Just remove a little bit of the soil and then separate out easily. It will easily come out. Loosen it up a little bit and then 
there. So it has got its own well developed roots and as you can see this one is already giving out its offshoot and you have your very own bunch of Tanati compact star. So friends here we have successfully got a beautiful cutting of Tanati Setosa compact star with beautiful three um, leaves and one leaf coming up from here if you can see and this is the offshoot which will in future give rise to one more uh, and as you can see here we can see this tip growing over here and it will give rise to one more uh, clump of Tenethi setosa um, under the soil so if you want you can propagate it in water as well so after you have taken out this cutting give it a good wash remove all that soil and put it in a jar of water you can do that or if um, I would suggest you to uh, uh, um, directly transfer it into the soil because the roots are quite well developed I don't think any point of putting it in water it is also giving out an offshoot and as you can see the offshoot has also got a tiny little root over here uh, the root over there so um, today I will be showing you the soil that uh, you need to uh, pot this cutting and um, talk a little bit about its uh, care conditions so let's get started so here I'll just move the camera down a little bit so you're able to see the soil that I've got so here in front of you I have got this coco coir or coco peat you can use coco peat you can use a regular potting mix and I will I have if you can see I have added a little bit of perlite all those little little white things in there and uh, that is nothing but perlite so this one so if you want you can add um, pumice you can add coarse sand to the soil if you don't have perlite that's completely okay um, and in this soil mix I would also be adding a little bit of compost in it for nutrition to the plant and um, and then I'll give it a good mix if you don't if you don't have compost you can also add worm castings to the soil mix um, so basically why I'm using perlite uh, sorry why I'm using coco peat or coco coir is because these plants are water loving plants and they love a lot of humidity they love their soil to be moist for a longer period of time but not soggy at the same time and coco peat or coco coir will help to retain all that moisture it will help to retain the wetness that is required for um, these uh, tenethys so that is why I'm using coco coir or coco peat. You can also use potting mix if you want. Um, that's okay. You can add a little bit of vermiculite to make sure that the soil remains moist because vermiculite helps to retain a lot of moisture. So now whenever you are taking the pod, make sure it has got enough of drainage holes because you don't want your plant to get root rod when you water your plants and the plants are sitting in the soggy wet soil. So just um, put some of the soil in there and then you put your cutting I think it's a pretty small pot for this plan but I think it should be okay and then you cover it up with the rest of the soil and that's it so a well draining soil is very necessary a pot the pot should have enough of drainage holes to allow the excess of water to seep through uh, just keep that thing in mind regarding the watering conditions I would always always suggest to check your soil before you water it now this soil if you can see I have already wet this soil I have already made it moist so after I pot this I will I'm not going to water this because the soil is already moist if I water more it's going to be too much soggy and that can uh, be harmful to my roots to the roots of this plant so I'm not going to water it again always always check the soil before you water it so how you're gonna check the soil is you can stick your finger if you have a hydro 
um, meter that's okay but the best strategy is to stick your finger up to a knuckle or one to two inches inside and if you can feel the wetness if you can feel the moisture just leave it do not water it if you feel that the soil is dry up to one to two inches please go ahead and water your plant um, that was about watering conditions lighting conditions so these plants they love they prefer medium to bright indirect light too much of bright light can fade the leaves and too much of low light can revert the leaves back into a whole green because they need um, that green chlorophyll to uh, for photosynthesis and if they do not receive a lot of light they will completely become green and all these variegations are going to go away your plant will look ugly so make sure you provide that balance of a perfect medium to bright indirect light for these plants exposing to a, a direct sunlight can burn the leaves it will cause the crispy leaves on the corners it will burn the leaves and the leaves will start turning yellow the plant is not going to look beautiful so don't expose these plants to a direct sunlight i'll just move the camera a little bit up while i'm talking to you so yes and uh, regarding humidity which is very very important for these plants so humidity they are humidity loving plants so always um, for humidity there are certain ways that how uh, you can maintain the humidity in your house first thing is uh, humidifier so that's the best option because humidifi humidifier uh, will make sure that it gives the um, maintains the humidity level evenly in the room and all the plants which are humidity loving like peace lilies and gonians tenethes galatheas stromanthes all these plants cluster them put them um, uh, near the humidifier to, so that that all that moisture goes um, is beneficial for these plants um, the next uh, way how to improve the humidity is by using the tray, the pebble tray. So you take the pebble tray, put a little bit of water in it and place your pot on top of the, uh, on top of the pebbles. Make sure that it's, the pot is not sitting in water. Just place it on top of the pebbles, not in, sitting in water. Um, and when the water will evaporate, it's going to benefit your plant. Um, next is by misting the leaves so if it's really hot and um, the plant is still moist you can still mist the leaves um, but it's like if the if the air is dry that water is still going to evaporate so if you choose to mist the leaves you might have to do it two to three times during the day so that you make sure that the humidity is provided to the plant throughout the day so that's one more point um, and clustering all those humidity loving plants together so what happens is that all the plants they transpire during the day and night so when they're transpiring they benefit with all that water that they are taking out so uh, they all of all those plants they share that moisture <coughs> sorry and uh, it, it benefits all the plants so that is one more way how you can improve humidity so humidity is very important for these plants and they'll tell you because the leaves will start turning brown and crispy and they'll tell and you'll come to know that the air is dry and they need humidity fertilizing um, these plants do not need a lot of fertilizer very weak dilution of um, a complete liquid fertilizer during spring and summer is just enough winters and autumn no need to fertilize at all because they go dormant they do not grow during the winter season or the autumn season um, only spring and summer and um, they, these plants are quite susceptible to the pest so just keep an eye on these plants if you think that um, you can see any pest on them neem oil solution the perfect um, pesticide organic natural pesticide or you can use hydrogen peroxide solution baking soda solution and uh, to remove all those pests um, these plants are toxic to children and pets so just make sure that you keep these plants away from the reach of children um, and uh, that's it about these plants basically so in this video we have talked about the propagation i've showed you the potting of these plants i've talked about the soil watering lighting conditions of this soil uh, sorry of this plant i hope you enjoyed watching this video um, if you really liked it please give us a thumbs up 
um, and do subscribe to our channel for new releases every week and we will see you next time with another exciting video till then stay safe happy gardening and wish you a very very happy new year